In this tutorial, we will match the VUA frame buffer's tone mapping and color corrections in Photoshop in a non-destructive way so that we can keep full control about further post-processing. So what I prepared here is a rendering of a car in this kind of high contrast environment here. Now the idea is to bring all of this data here into Photoshop so that we can do some additional color corrections or some additional retouching directly in Photoshop. So the way I want to do that is to not bake in any of these kind of view transformations as we applied here to our rendering, but to try to bring the raw data into Photoshop and then basically rebuild this kind of structure here in Photoshop so that we're not losing any of our original data, but we have the biggest range of possibilities than to do additional corrections or additional retouching in Photoshop. Let's first take a look here on this picture and I want you to focus down here on this color picker that you can see if I hover here over different parts of the image then I get basically my brightness values or the color values for the specific pixel in here. You can see that some of those areas in here for example in those windows or if I check some of those highlights here they're well beyond one and that can pose some problems if we want to transfer this kind of information here directly into Photoshop. So in this tutorial we will check what we can do in this kind of scenarios and as a short disclaimer it's oftentimes not possible to just get a one-on-one -on -one match of transferring all of this data over to Photoshop but in this tutorial I want to show that it's possible to get something that looks at least visually pretty much one-to-one -one the same in Photoshop and in this tutorial we will check out ways how we can achieve this kind of result. So if you watched any of my previous tutorials, you will know that the basic workflow in here is to render internally this kind of linear image, and that is this image right here. So this is the image that the renderer sees. But the problem is that we are not able to show the colors here of this linear image correctly on the monitor, because oftentimes there is a huge amount of dynamic range, which is well out of the possibilities to show here correctly on the monitors. You can see some of these brightness values here are really huge. So in order to show this correctly or to be able to show this on our monitors, we have to apply a procedure which is called tone mapping and also additional color corrections. And those are all those procedures that I applied in here. So once we do this, we will get an image that looks much more photographic because now we're able to show all of the information of this linear image here correctly in our monitors. Nonetheless, it's very important to understand that all of these kind of procedures here are just view transformations. So this kind of transformation is just something that's added here on top of our linear image. And that's also the same way like what we want to achieve in Photoshop so that we have our raw linear data in Photoshop and then have these additional view transformations on top, which you can switch on or off without distorting here our base linear data. So the first step is to basically recreate this image here in Photoshop. And by doing this, I also export it or I also save out all of these kind of render passes in here. So we have like lighting, GI, specular, all of these kind of passes which are required to rebuild this kind of image so that we don't just use the baked RGB color, but we use all of the raw render passes in Photoshop. So now in order to save out all of these different channels, we just click on here and then save all image channels to separate files. Then we can choose a file name and an image format. In this case, we will use OpenEXR, save all of these different channels out in here. And then it will create one file for each of these kind of render channels in here. And then we can open all of those in Photoshop and combine it to one image. Additionally, I will just copy here my current channel to clipboard. So that's what we're seeing here in our view and copy this to the clipboard so that in Photoshop, we have a comparison between the image that we're gonna recreate now from these render passes and here the ground truth of how it should look like basically after combining all of those render passes together. So in Photoshop, I did now two things. One is to just paste the image that we copied into our clipboard from our frame buffer here into a new file and that is this image in here. We will note it has eight bits here per channel. And then the other thing is that I loaded all of these kind of different render channels that I exported earlier and I just put them together in one Photoshop file. And as you can notice, this one here has 32 bits per channel. So let's first start here by checking all of the different passes that we exported here earlier. And let's start here with our base pass, which is the lighting pass. Then we have here our global illumination pass, our refraction pass, our reflection pass, specular pass, self-illumination, and then the glare pass. So how do we combine all of those passes together? That's very easy. We just select all of the top passes in here and then just add them all to here, our lighting pass. Now we have an image that looks 
directly identical with here our ground truth in terms of color. So now we basically recreated correctly here our linear image. And now the next step would be to bring these kind of view transformations that we applied in the V-Ray frame buffer also into Photoshop so that we have an identical image to work from. So now back here in our frame buffer, we then re-enable here our tone mapping and color corrections. And then here in the display correction, we can right click on this and then save here all our color corrections as a LUT file. So once we do that, I just save this here as a LUT file on my desktop. And then I will show you why this in this case here doesn't work and then what we can do in order to fix it. But first we will copy here our current channel to clipboard so that we have something to compare to again in Photoshop. And then let's check how we can fix this kind of issue. So now in Photoshop, I pasted this image here from the frame buffer basically again as a comparison, but I said this one here is all the information baked into our eight bits per channel file. So that's just our ground truth to compare something to. And now we have here our layered linear image and we will want to apply now here our color lookup table on top of it. So once we do that, let's just load the color table that we exported and we will might think that we have something that looks basically fine. But if you compare both of those images, you will see that there is a very big problem in all of the bright parts here of our image. So everything that had a value beyond one here in our V-Ray frame buffer is now basically being clamped and has these kind of problems that everything gets this kind of grayish color in here. So everything that's like darker areas, this works fine, but all of these kind of bright areas, they get totally displayed wrong. And that's why we can't use this kind of workflow here that I just showed you by just exporting all of our view transformations as a LUT file. In this case, it doesn't work. So we have to find an alternative workflow in order to recreate this image here correctly in Photoshop. So now back here in our frame buffer, what we have to do without going too much into the details is to basically separate our tone mapping from our color correction. So our tone mapping procedure in this kind of workflow that I set up in here would be this filmic tone map in here. And then all of these three things here are basically color corrections. So those color corrections I could export as a LUT file because they are not messing with my dynamic range of the image. But this filmic tone map here basically modifies the dynamic range or it applies like this view transformation that basically pushes all of these kind of brightness values of our linear image into something that we can show correctly on our monitor. So this step we have to recreate in Photoshop because these kind of transformations we can't save into a LUT file. But now in order to not get confused with all of these kind of different nodes in here, let's just disable all of them for now temporarily. And let's just apply the most basic tone mapping procedure in V-Ray, which is this exposure node in here. And then in this highlight burn value, you can slide this all the way to zero. What this is doing, as you can see, it's drastically reducing the contrast of our image, but at the same time, it's also basically pushing all of these brightness values, which before couldn't be shown correctly on our monitor into something that now can be shown on our monitor. So basically we have now all of the information that's stored in this image to be able to see here on our monitor. So this kind of procedure we will try now to replicate in Photoshop also on our linear image in order to get the same kind of result in here. So I will just copy this one here, copy the current channel to clipboard. So we have something to compare it again to. Then we try to find a procedure in Photoshop to get basically this kind of effect in here. As a short disclaimer, the method that I'm gonna show you in a second, I also just recently learned from this channel in here. So you can check that out as well. I will put the link in the description, but now let's jump to Photoshop and see how this method basically works. So what we have here is again, our color reference that I just pasted from the frame buffer. And then in here we have our different layers that I exported earlier. Now we just add a channel mixer node in here. And then we just put this channel mixer node at the very top. And the only thing we have to do now is to go through all of these different output channels here. So we start with the red output channel, put the contrast here all the way to 200. Then we choose the green one, also put it to 200 and then the blue one and also max out this value in here. And then you will get this kind of result here, which at the moment doesn't look like much. But as soon as you put this one here into divide mode, then you will get exactly the same result like in our color reference. So you can see now those two different files in here are exactly matching. That's basically how you can emulate the workflow of the highlight compression 
in the VWave frame buffer. Now back in the frame buffer, reducing this kind of highlight burn value is normally only the first step that we're gonna do in order to get a photographic image. So again, we will just push all of the brightness values into something that we can see on our monitors. But at the same time, we're losing a lot of contrast as you can see, and the picture overall just looks way more boring and flat. So now the next step would be to add different kind of color corrections in here, for example, a curve correction. And then we can just bring back our contrast, for example, by just like creating a curve that looks a little bit like this. So we are like basically making more contrast in the dark parts and at the same time brightening up here our brighter parts. And now you can see we have a picture that looks already way more interesting and something that looks way more photographic. So now we can add, for example, other color corrections in here, for example, a white balance and just make the picture overall more warm. And then also, for example, add some saturation in here. And now we get a picture that basically looks way more interesting than our original linear image. And at the same time, we don't have these kind of clamped color values in here. And now is the question how we can bring this picture here back into Photoshop. And that's very easy because we just need to evaluate what is basically our tone mapping procedure. So that is this one in here where we are using this highlight burn value in here. And then we disable this one in here. And then we just export our color corrections. In this case, it would be these three different color corrections here on top. We would just export those here as a LUT file. And then I just override the old one that I had here earlier. So we're exporting those. And then we just enable here our exposure again. So that is basically the reference that we try to match. And I just copy this current channel here to my clipboard and then paste it into Photoshop so that we have something to compare to. So in here, again, the pasted file from the frame buffer. And then inside here, we have our channel mixer node that I just showed you earlier in order to enable this kind of highlight compression here. And then we just add basically our lookup table. So once I do that, I just load the lookup table that we just exported here earlier. And then we have a picture that basically matches exactly here our color reference in the frame buffer. And that's basically how you recreate this kind of tone mapping workflow correctly in Photoshop and now you're able to do all of these kind of adjustments here additionally in a non-destructive way because as you remember we just exported here our linear image channels and now we can just paint additional stuff in here do additional color corrections without basically distorting the original data that we rendered out. So now back to the frame buffer as you remember initially we weren't using this exposure node in here with this highlight burn but instead we were using this kind of new film tone map in here so let me just disable all of this here and then just explore what we need to do in order to use this kind of filmic tone map approach which is new in V-Ray 5. So this filmic tone map is basically an operation that combines several kind of procedures together so once I enable this you can see there's different kind of types in here and then these different kind of types they also have different kind of adjustments with different kind of results in here. Let's now use this one here for now and the only thing that this is doing is basically a combination of two methods. So let me just disable this and it is just doing exactly the same thing that what we did before. So it just compresses basically here our highlights and then it just adds like a curve correction on top and then just brings back the contrast similar way like what we did basically before. So now the only thing we need to do is to basically recreate this kind of curve in here in Photoshop. And then we can basically emulate whatever is happening here in this filmic tone map. So let's just delete this in here. And then let's just use this picture here as our reference. So I will just copy this one here to the current channel. And then in Photoshop, we try to recreate basically these two nodes that we just had here in the frame buffer in order to emulate this filmic tone map in here. So now here in Photoshop on the right hand side, we have the reference that I just copied from the frame buffer. And here on the left hand side, we have here our different layers with this channel mixer node in here. Now the only thing that we have to do in order to match both of them is to add like this curve in here. So I have this curve adjustment. And in this case, this adjustment looks like this. And then once I enable this, you will see that you will get pretty much the same result like here on the right hand side. I can also disable this mask in here and then hide this layer, you will see that basically now both of them, they look directly the same. You can also further verify this by just switching here this reference layer to the difference mode. And then 
the darker this one here basically is, the less of a difference is there between this layer and everything below it. So the goal is basically to have a curve adjustment that makes this layer here completely black. And then you would have it perfectly matched. But as said, there's always a little bit of eyeballing involved. So I think in this case, basically the result is pretty much good enough. And there's like almost no visual difference between those two different layers in here. So on my Patreon, among many other bonuses, you can also find for this lesson here a custom PSD file where I basically pre-built already all of these kind of custom curves in here for all the four different kind of filmic tone maps which exist in V-Ray at the moment. So you can check this out and you wouldn't need to manually match those by yourself. So you can find the link in the description below. And other than that, now the only thing that we would need to do is to basically now, since we matched here, our filmic tone map. We only need to import our lookup table on top of that with the additional color corrections. And then we should be able to get a result that looks pretty much the same like in the V-Ray frame buffer. Now in the V-Ray frame buffer, we have to disable here our filmic tone map and enable these three different kind of color corrections that we did. And then we just export all of those ones here as a lookup table file. So once we do this, then we go back to Photoshop and again, as before, we just enable here this filmic tone map again, and then just copy this here as a reference to just have a comparison. And then back in Photoshop, again, this one here is our reference. And then this one here, we just add like this lookup table in here. So color lookup, then we just load the one that we just exported. And then you will see that now this image in here and this one here looks pretty much exactly the same and there's like almost no visual difference between both of them here. So this concludes this tutorial here about how to basically non-destructively recreate a tone map image from the visual frame buffer based on the raw linear data. And if you like this tutorial, you can hit the like button. If you didn't like it, also let me know what could be improved. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below. I normally tend to answer all of my questions in there and then see you in the next tutorial and talk soon. Bye bye and take care.